Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go through section 14.2, measures of central tendency. Um, in this section, we're going to compute the mean, the median, the mode. We're going to find the five number summary of a distribution and um, apply measures of central tendency to compare data. Um, in terms of this chapter on statistics, this section may be the stuff that you're most familiar with. Mean, median, mode is certainly something that you would have seen in various high school courses, so maybe this one's a little bit familiar. Hopefully it is at least. We will start out with the mean, right? The mean of the data set is all is the sum of all of the values of the variable divided by the number of observations, right? The this this is a Greek letter sigma right there, and that represents adding up all of the uh, values in your data set. Okay, sum uh, the sigma is just an, a, a shorthand notation for the sum of all of the x's of all the variables. All right, um, and our sample population is read as x bar. We use uh, x with a line above it. And then for populations, we use the Greek letter sigma. It's a lowercase, or excuse me, not sigma, mu. The Greek letter mu, it's a lowercase mu. If you didn't know much about the Greek alphabet, that's okay. It looks kind of like a funny looking M, um, but that's the Greek letter mu that we use for population mean, x bar for sample means. So let's look at our first example. You can pause the video if you want to give yourself a chance to read through it. So to find our mean here, we're going to say, all right, I've got my formula. I'm going to write it down. X bar is equal to the sum of all of the X's divided by the number of observations. So in this case, we have 40 plus 42 plus 65 plus 51 and 55 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, five different data points. And so our mean, when you type that into your calculator, is equal to 50.6. So there's an average of 50.6 pounds of compost generated at the five um, stations the first day of the festival, 50.6 pounds. In this next example, we'll look at how we find the mean when we have a histogram. Okay, so how can I use this histogram to find the mean? Uh, again, pause the video if you want and, and give the problem a read through. But let's see, so we have the temperature going across the x-axis and the number of days going up the vertical axis. That's the frequency for each of those temperatures. So that means that it was 52 degrees for four days, or it was 53 degrees for six days, or it was 54 degrees for three days, etc. So we would have to add 52 and 52 and 52 and 52. Well, that seems horribly um, inefficient, all right? So what we will do instead of that is to say we're going to have x bar is equal to 52 degrees times four days plus 53 degrees times six days. And then we will keep going through it that way. Let's see, I think it was 54 degrees times three days, 55 degrees, that's the highest bar on my histogram, times eight days, 56 degrees times, that one is also four days, plus 57 degrees times five days. Beautiful. All of that, what goes in the bottom? Here's a place where people make mistakes. I'm not going to count one, two, three, four, five, six different temperatures that would be wrong. I'm going to add up all of the frequencies. So that would be the 4 plus the 6 plus the 3 plus the 8 plus 4 and 5, and that gives me a total of 30 days. Uh, and it even tells me the problem, the temperatures, uh, yeah, the temperatures for the last 30 days. All right, that's a little bit more to um, churn through in your calculator. I would suggest typing that whole big numerator in first. Uh, and when you do that, all of those products add up to 1,637 divided by 30. And when you do that division, you should get 54.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is the average temperature over those 30 days. We can kind of think of our mean formula a little bit differently to go if you were to go back to the beginning of this problem and write down a different formula for x bar, the mean or the average is the sum of x times f. So that's each data point times the frequency divided by the sum of all of the frequencies. 
that's what's in the denominator. So you can think of it, you can consider this problem as a bit of a different formula. That's a terrible sigma, I tried. Um, but if when you have a frequency, you need to multiply um, your, your data point times the frequency and then divide by the sum of all of the frequencies. In our next example, we're going to look at what effect extreme values of a variable have on the mean. Okay, so looking at the table on the right, the first thing to note is that the first column, which isn't labeled, it is labeled in my other uh, like version of this file, so that's weird. The first column is the rank, and the second column is visitors, and that's in millions. All right, I'm not sure how that happened in the exporting of this file, but at any rate, we're going to find the mean, x bar is equal to. So the rank is not the frequency, that's just the ranking of each of these social media sites. Uh, but we're going to add 1100, 1100, plus 1000, plus 310, 225, 250, 120, 110, 185, and 80. And remember those each represent uh, millions of people. So 80 million, 85 million, 100 million, etc. 1100 million would be 1.1 billion, by the way. And when you add each of them up and divide by 10, you get that x bar, whoops, you get that x bar is equal to 341. And that 341, remember, is million people. 341 million people. All right, so now let's, that's the answer to A. So now let's address B. Is this mean an accurate measure of the average number of unique visitors to these social media sites? So how does that 341 compare to um, how does it compare to the, the 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 different social media sites? So if you take a look, 341 is higher than nearly all of them. And what ends up happening is that these two extreme values skew the results. Uh, higher. It skews them up in this direction so that that 341 isn't representative of what's going on with most of these social media sites, right? Most of them, all but three, are below 300. So 341 is a bad measure of the center of this data set, and that's why we have more than one measure of center. We have the mean as one measure, but we also have the median and the mode as measures of the center, right? Sometimes one is better than the other. Mean is not useful, is not as good of a measure when you have these extreme values. So the next measure of center is that of the median, right? The median is another to word for the middle of a data set, but it's not the average. It's the actual middle value in the list of values. So we have to have our data in increasing or decreasing order, but it has to be in order. And then if I have an odd number of values, the median is the value in the middle position, the exact middle. So if I have 11 uh, pieces of data, the median is the sixth one, because five and five, and then one in the middle. Right? Uh, but if I have 12 pieces of data, if there's an even number of values, then the median is the mean, or the average, of the two middle values. So if I have 12 pieces of data, I take the sixth and the seventh piece and average them together, add and divide by two. In our example on median, we have a list of the presidents who served office between 1901 and 2008. Find the median age for this distribution, and we're going to see how Barack Obama's age at inauguration compares to that of all of the other presidents after 1900. So the first step is to take all of these presidents, and I believe there's 19 of them if you count. Go ahead and pause if you want and count how many are there. But you need to take all of those different ages and put them in ascending order. Fortunately, that is already done for us. Here we have the ages of those presidents in ascending order. Lowest, youngest is 42, and the oldest in the list is 69. So to find the middle one, we're going to note that there are 19 values here. 19 values. And I always like to do this ahead of time. Now, some people will like cross out one and then the other to get to the center. That's perfectly fine if you prefer to do it that way. You know, write your list down and do the crossy outy method. That's the fancy term for it. Um, but what I like to think about is that 19 values, if I take 9 plus 9, right, that makes 18. 
plus one in the middle. Okay, so I like to split that list up into if there's an even number or an odd number and find which entry is in the middle and then I can just count to that entry. Okay, you're never going to be not typically working with lists of hundreds of values, right? If they're reasonably small, you might be able to do that mental math or you can check it in your calculator. Okay, the tenth value in my list is the middle. So if I count to that, let's see, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Fifty-four years old, that is the median. Okay, and the president, if you find it, that was 54 years old is right here, Herbert Hoover. Uh, I believe there's another one on the list that's 54, George W. Bush. Okay, uh, I think that's all. Yes, that is all. So Obama was a few years younger than, uh, well, let's see, seven to be exact, years younger than those two presidents. All right, but 54 is the median of this data set. In our next example, we have a frequency distribution, still need to find the median of. Uh, in this, it's almost easier, and you'll see why in just a moment, but pause the video if you want to read what um, is going on in the problem. All right, and it helps that I'm given the sum, the total number of data points, right? So I'm not just going to look at these ounces over there on the left and find the middle of them because there are eight uh, uh, jugs of milk that are 27 ounces and five that are 28 ounces and I could write this all out but there's 50 numbers represented there okay so that you know might be a little bit more challenging to do all right so I know that 50 is even there's going to be two numbers in the middle all right so what's a good way to think about this right so I can take that 50 data points and break it up into well half of 50 is 25 plus 25 right but the two entries in the middle Okay, are the 25th and the 26th entry. And the way that like kind of we make sense of that is if I have my 50 split up into 24, 1, 1, and 24. Okay, and this is maybe a little bit different way than you've seen to think about this before, but I think it really helps, especially, you know, with these frequency distribution problems, right? So this is the 25th entry right there and the 26th right there, and those would be in the middle because what's above them and below them is the same okay so now how do i find that 25th 25th and 26th entry on my list well there's the first eight whoops wanted to point right at them there's the first eight if i add the five to that eight and five is 13 so i'm going to kind of add as i go and 13 plus 12 is 25 hey i found the 25th entry it's 29 and the 26th entry is right after that. Okay, so eight, we're adding up as we go. Uh, if I add the 16, that's gonna be 35, 41, right? But all I need is the 25th and the 26th entry. So to answer the question, we're gonna take 29 plus 30 divided by two is 29.5. And so the median of these jugs of milk that should contain 32 ounces is 29.5 ounces. All right, there we go. The next topic of this session is that of the five number summary. So the definition for the five number summary is um, so we have the median first, we've already talked about that, divides my data set into two halves. Okay, that's one of the five numbers. The set of numbers below the median, called the lower half, that should kind of make sense, above the median called the upper half. All right, but if you split each of those halves in half again, you find the first quartile and the third quartile. So the median in my lower half is the first quartile because we're dividing the list into quarters when we have and have again. And the median of the upper half is called the third quartile. Notation, we use Q1 and Q3 for our quartiles. And then the five numbers, so those are two more. The five numbers come from putting together the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. And the... Um, the, the, the median is also sometimes referred to as Q2. Uh, and sometimes we use subscripts. Sometimes they're just right after the, no, the, the letter Q1, or it could be Q with a subscript of one also. All right, so that is referred to as the five number summary. And let's look at our president example and find, uh, well, our, our 
our five number summary. Um, so let's go with the upper and the lower halves first, and then the quartiles, and then we'll write down the full five number summary. We found previously, or we, we said previously there's 19 numbers in my list, so that means that the 10th is in the is the median and it was 54 but I need to remember which of those 54 so I'm going to count to the 10th the 10th entry 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 10 and it's the second 54 that guy right there so there's 9 before it and 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 after that entry okay so now we have our list broken up into a top half and a bottom half and in those 9 entries in the bottom half the middle entry would be the fifth, right? Four and four, one in the middle. Four plus four is eight, and then one in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five. That guy right there, whoops. That guy right there, that 51 is the fifth entry. That is Q1. And then the fifth entry in the top half of the list is this guy right there, 60. All right, so I'm going to highlight here. This is the bottom half of the list. And this is the top half of the list. All right, so that's how we identify those three numbers in the five number summary. And then we can just write it all down. The minimum is 42. Then Q1 is 51. The median is 54. Q3, the third quartile was um, 60, and Q4, or not Q4, <laughs> the maximum, the, the highest number in the list, is 69 years old. There we go. So that is referred to as the five number summary for this list of presidents' ages. The most common use of the five number summary is to create a graphical display of data called a box and whisker plot. Sometimes it's just referred to as a box plot. And these are the steps you can pause and read through them to create a box plot. I'm not going to do one in this video by hand, but those steps, if you follow them, you should create something that looks like this. Minimum is 42. Here's the box part of the box plot with the quartiles and the median, and then the maximum is 69, and these are referred to as the whiskers. Your box plot should always be on some sort of a scale. I would suggest when you do the homeworks to do one by hand and then see how that compares to the multiple choice questions in my math lab. Okay, That would be highly recommended in, in going through this section. And finally, the last topic of the section is that of mode. I'm not sure what this blue circle is doing there. That kinda, that's kind of weird. Uh, but the mode of a data set is the value that occurs most frequently, the one that's there the most often. You can have more than one mode. You can also have no mode. If nothing occurs more than once, you have no mode. Uh, but it's the, the value that occurs most frequently. And we have four pretty quick examples involving mode. A is not labeled, but I'll call that A. Uh, again, I'll, I'll pause each time. You don't have to pause the video. I'll pause to give you a second to look at the data set uh, and see if you can identify what value is there the most often. All right, so in A, this is me pausing, giving you thinking time. <laughs> uh, I see a six and I see a six. All right, so that means that the mode is six. Then take a look at B, and what do we have occurring most often? I see a 4 here and a 4 here. I also see a 6 here and a 6 there. Note that they're both there twice. That's the most often occurring value. So the modes are 4 and 6. Okay, so you can have two modes. That data set would be referred to as bimodal. There's two modes. All right, letter C, take a look. Hopefully you notice that nothing occurs more than once. So no value occurs more often than the others. So letter C has no mode. And letter D, take a second look at it. Now, note those aren't numbers. That's okay. They don't have to be numbers in my data set. It can be anything, right? My mode for, for letter D, the mode is capital B because I see two of them. 
All right, that's the last topic of the section. Hopefully the most direct uh, problems to answer also. Uh, there's no computation. It's just looking and finding. All right, that is the end of the video. Get to work on the homework. Let me know if you have questions. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day.